Welcome back guys, James here and here we are again on a something different this time, a Q&A video about Sonic and the Million Master. Um, the questions I'm about, to answer, I'm about to answer is something in regards to like behind the scenes, any more information or something to do with the upcoming content. So anything can go here. However, I'm, I'm not gonna answer every single question because there's some that I feel like I don't really wanted to answer that. Especially in regards right now. Also, plus I hope you don't mind that the background video is is my playthrough of Mega Man Battle Network Chronos X. Um, I hope you don't mind about that because, I mean, let's face it. Um, do you want to see this in the entire video? Oh shit! Stop! 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 Did uh I did I win? Two kids gone die tonight! No, I don't think so. Especially for me. I keep on seeing the very same scene and it can get very tiring, I'll be honest. So anyway, um I'll be answering them um chronologically. Actually the one who, who is the earliest first. So for starters, guys okay, boy, I'm really sorry by the way if I botcher your username or something. Sorry in advance, okay? <laughs> so right now are there going to be other party members, or is it just going to be Sonic? Also, I'm not sure if this is a mistake in a game or not, but there are times where Sonic is referred to by Walter or a different name, and I was curious for, for why. Okay, so, for starters, actually, there will be other party members, however, that was, at, that was back when Sonic and Steel Bar, so, originally, I was planning to add the third member of the group, which is Cheaper the Squirrel, or just cheaper. He's originally going to be the medic of the team, or most likely the guy who gives you buffs and debuffs for the for the entire round. Um, the idea here in Sonic and Steel of Darkness, um, which is what was the name at that time, um, the original idea is that the RPG battle system is going to be something more simple, something you will see from many RPG makers, or something like from Earthbound or from Lisa, anything from those. It's not gonna be so simple, a little bit of dazzle with the whole art style. However, at that point, I really want to spice things up, especially it's just... Okay, so... About the whole name thing, um... If you pause the menu, if you go to the pause menu and look at the stats, you'll notice that Sonic's name is... looks different than compared to the... the others, um, besides the XP. You'll notice that it looks like a tape that you plastered all over, and then you write something on top of it. That's actually a foreshadow that Sonic's name is, isn't Sonic, it's actually Oton. Oton and Mallory, the duo. Yeah, I know, um, something, um, the idea behind that is that, well, you know where this is going by this point. We, I kind of want to transfer this into an indie game status. I mean, if you look at the game's description from the main page, you'll notice that I already claimed that this is going to be an indie game by this point. No longer a fan game. I already move on. Um, I mean, to be fair, it's really hard to let go of it. Eventually, we have to move on with this. Not only that, um, fun fact, um, Mallory's name isn't actually the first one, the first idea to come up with. Um, but before Mallory, um, there has there are other names before, such as Annabelle or May or something like that. The, the name was used to be more, I don't know, I don't know how you describe that. Um, something more like English name or British name or something. I'm not really sure. Here's a fun fact. Um, once I finish the scrapbook, I'll be also including the the almanac, which which compose of of enemies' information, everything like that, like a bio. Yo, um, the one who's going to describe the enemies is going to be Mallory, and um, and the, here's the funny part: every single name, every single name of the robot or the enemy, is actually named by Mallory, or actually code name or nickname by her, mainly because of the, the duo itself. Like, Oton is really smart. I'll say he's smart. He's a he's a fast thinker, good at decision making, all. 
However, he lacks critical thinking. Unlike Mallory, he does have that. However, it's like the opposite. He lacks, she lacks common sense. And not only that, she also tends to forget someone's name or something else. Basically, she tends to forget something. So, you might be noticed that during Mechawatt's battle, is basically the main boss on the demo, you'll notice that why isn't why the boss poster the why the poster didn't call him Walter instead. Why is it Mechawatt out of nowhere? Like nothing in the game so far is been calling him Mechawatt yet. So the reason is because it was Mallory his do who's doing the naming. And that's the f that's that's actually uh, I really want to to press him with the whole oh she forgets something like that. It's kinda like like Sherlock Holmes at the time, like Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Sherlock Holmes tends to forget stuff. She, and it's, it's the same thing with Mallory right now. Okay, so then that's all for him. So that's all for the next one. For Victor Ambramides, um, he said, So far, we've seen Sonic and Amy, but there is, is there more Sonic characters in this game? Well, originally, yes, but I'm starting to think, no, nah, not that much. I mean, beside Robotnik himself, I mean, at the time, I mean, you already know that this is originally going to be a fun game, of course, I already have plans. I don't have much plans for them, to be honest, but I was originally want to include them. Or, in a more of a twisted way, I'll be honest. More like, not actually a bad twisted way, like, it's more like, I have some surprises for them. For example, Rouge the Bad is not going to be, she's not going to be a thief. And Blaze the Cat is, she, actually, she is going to be the thief. The other, it's going to be the other way around. That she's still in the Emeralds, well... Blaze, well, Rouge herself is going to be like a jewelry shop owner or something like that. Yeah, that's, those are kind of things I'll be inspecting. However, since this is going to be an indie game, I'm not sure if I'm going to include them anymore. So there's, so that's that. Okay, so Rifter says, What are some of your inspiration for Sonic and the Main Master? I love the style of the characters and set it to grid. It's so unique. Okay, so back in Sage 2018, I did mention in the game's page, like the main page for the game, um, I mentioned that it's one of the inspiration is either Earthbound or Mother Tree, or somewhere in between. I mean, it's kind of a bit obvious, but at the same time, I, I can you can actually see a lot of people compare this to Undertale due to the art style. So that's that. But also, there there are also other inspirations, not just the whole aesthetic to it. There's also ones like, for example, the whole combat system from Sage 2018 is inspiration to not only Mario and Luigi, but also Battle Network, like Mega Man Battle Network, the one you see right now on the screen. Yeah, that's the one, the whole card-based thing. Originally, it's going to be something like that, and I realized, okay, I mean, I mean, I don't have to explain why the, the old system doesn't work that much, especially to this setting. Not only that, but not only that, Battle Network come up, come off it first. So I don't want to give Sonic another RPG that doesn't have any uniqueness. I mean, if you look at Mario, Luigi, Paper Mario, Mega Battle Network, Star Force, you'll notice that their RPG is has personality. It has identity. So I want to give something like that. So what else? I think there's also one more inspiration, which is Ace Attorney. Yeah, that's it. Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney, I think you'll notice that the mud shots for, I think many people keep on mentioning about the mud shots for the game, like, oh, they're so, they have so much personality, they're just so much, it's, they're very expressive. So, that's, I think that's where the inspiration comes from, it's from Ace Attorney. The main reason is because, is that, I want to make sure that the mud shots are, feel like they're alive, they're, they're, I mean, if you look at, um, Mechawatt and Lady Corona, both of those two have not yet, have doesn't they're not complete. They don't have animation, they don't have like other expressions. And I want to like there are already plans for it, like there are plan there are plan expressions for it. I mean if you look at the historic investigation series, mainly from that, if you look at this one of their portraits, they they look like they're actually interacting to each other. Especially Edgeward there when when he bows down or the way how Horace uses his gun, uh, that's real, I really like that. It felt like there's actually, they're actually interacting to each other. They're just simply saying, oh, I'm here, and here's there. And they're just talking to, uh, to each other, there's not much going on. I kind of want to add more stuff to it. And that's where I got the idea for the portraits, or the marches, or something. Okay, I think that's it.
This is Super Kirby 24. Um, are you ever gonna show how strong so Sonic is there? I'm asking this because I'm a Sonic fan that's into power scaling. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not really into power scaling. I don't really care if the character is really strong or not, or does have a super form or not. The people keep claiming that what Sonic super form here, and, and don't get me wrong, it's very curious indeed. But usually, um, I'll be honest, um, I haven't, I really. I didn't plan that much for the super form at all, like, especially now, it's more like unlikely now, it's really unlikely now that will happen. So the best way to describe it for Sonic's situation compared to others is that, I'm not really sure though, no, even though I describe it, because if I'm going to compare to other, other Sonic's, I think the best way, to describe, best way to to examine his performance here is that it's the way how he did it, but if you want to base it on his speed and all those kind of stuff, he might be the weakest Sonic out of all the, the, the of all the cannons you have heard of. I think that's the best way to describe it because I'm not really sure because there's this, there's just a lot of there are a lot of factors that, that can happen. It's not just about speed. Like you can actually get crafty. You, you can actually take advantage of speed. Like you don't you don't have to be speedy in order to win. I feel like that should be the thing because AT can go. It's just that. For those who have the higher advantage, and that's where the best to describe it. I mean, that's it for that, for Super Kirby 24. I'm really sorry that you feel disappointed that this is by far the weakest Sonic. I mean, Otto said me for combat at first, so, so he, he's actually not paid for it to begin with. Number he's sturdy, I'll be honest. So that is Hand Tom. Um, are there any plans for gimmicks to affect controls to give it different movement responses? Like in Mario Luigi, being an example with jumping and hammer defenses being pretty different. Actually, yes, there's actually much more. If you're, ta if you're talking about the player game, it's the one thing I'll add here is that I want to give Sonic more mobility, more stuff to do, rather than just standing there and jump around. So the one system I'll be planning to add is called the Gearbox system. The Gearbox system is more like a... It's like, imagine this, you're into the... Let's just say if you're an engineer from TF2, you deploy a turret. You deploy a turret, a Spencer, a teleporter. Those are gearboxes in Sonic and Mega Master. They're actually tools. Their main purpose is to handle some of the tasks that you cannot handle at the same time. Basically, it gets rid of the basically eases down the whole multitasking part. Like it makes things a lot easier, but at what cost? That's what I'm trying to plan to do. They basically act like turrets, and they actually have different functions. Some of the, some of the gearboxes will actually slow down the enemy's movement. These bullets destroys enemy bullets, or give or converts bullets into MP. Grants Sonic a temporary shield every few seconds, and all those kind of stuff. You get the point. You can go much more than that. But if you're talking about the enemy gimmicks, oh boy, there's a lot of them. Not kidding, and there are actually a lot of them. Uh, if you stick to the end of the video, I'll be showcasing the what will be the next chapter, and I already have a lot of plans for for this one. Um, in front of game, it's, it's actually I could think of a lot of things, mainly because all thanks to Mallory's cursor, the like the target cursor. If, if it wasn't for that, I can think of very few things. It's something that already been come from Mario and Luigi. So here's the thing. Um, let's, let's let's see for examples. Um. For example, there's this turret, let's say, for this, en this enemy turret will lock onto your cursor, like a laser, and it will fire a laser beam onto it. The thing is, the cursor is immune to the laser beam, however, it will also damage, it can damage Sonic. That's the thing, this is for example. So also, also, there's another example here, um, let's just say there's, let's just say there's, like, remember the whole overheat system you have to choose? I can actually jump with those buttons and you'll have to rely on like the screen or uh, screen from the word or something like the LCD screen or like, something like that or something more crazy. I can also do something wacky as well for the characters like I can actually create a machine that, that can also stops, stops bullets like freezes them or something like that. Like there's also bi environmental hazards that can either help the player or help the enemy. So, there's a lot of combinations, and because of that, you're going to get to see a lot of wacky things. I mean, heck, there's even, I already have planned one level to have, like, a mirror effect. Like, you can't see the bullets, 
you can see the bullets like direct paths or whether they're mirrored or something like that or the mirror cross in the intersection and the bullets will somehow disappear and reappear something like those so yeah i think that's cover up the whole gimmicks part there's actually so much to talk about if you see the end of the video i'm gonna, I'm gonna explain those while i'm gonna plan for the, cha the, the next chapter so here's a big one on Silver Studios, there's a lot of questions there. I won't be answering all of them, I'll be honest. There is one I, I don't really feel comfortable to answer, I'll be honest. Okay, so here we go. The sun gotta get the Sonic gets his gotta go fast back. Basically means the Sonic ever go fast. Well the thing is, um judging from the position of this game right now, it's really unlikely. But if you're talking about the original idea, yeah, he was originally going to have it through his super form, which was just a what if situation at the time. Like, it's just a, it's just a concept at the time. It's just, a, it's just from paper. Um, the, idea, the idea in recovering his speed, though, was something different. It's not something like he just gets his speed. It's more like he has to earn that speed. What I'm trying to say here is that he, once he got his quote unquote super form, he basically has the ability to absorb kinetic energy or transfer them. This is something like this. If you absorb the, the kinetic energy of, a, let's say, a bot just standing still, you, you actually gain zero velocity and basically means he can't move that fast, basically just default speed. However, if you absorb the kinetic energy of a bullet, you're basically as fast as a bullet, like you use the velocity, the power of the bullet itself. However, also plus you can actually transfer the kinetic energy for example, the said body energy, kinetic energy of the bullet to the box, you can, you can actually propulse it, which could be used as a weapon. You can also do that to jumps and everything else. So that's basically it. Um, I'm not really sure what else because this is more becoming an indie game, so the whole gotta go fast thing is now off. Most of us are being a game, I think I already mentioned this before. Nah, not anymore, especially the, the status of it. When will the anime series launch? Okay, I'll be honest on this one. I think I'm really sure why I started the anime series because I gave up on game developing a long time ago. Like, before I returned back to the game dev, I was like, maybe I can use my... I was like, I was thinking of something different. I was like, I want to do something different to my career or something like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not really good at game, at programming at first. Yeah, I mean, you can... I mean, I did some prototypes before and they're not actually like properly they're not properly coded in a good way so i was like i was about to give up and i stick to animation and all my, and my whole drawing thing you know the whole arts thing so at first i was like this is not bad i can do this the problem is i don't have the resources to make a proper series like an actual official series like i have this kind of nitpick like i want to make things to make the quality like much better than it should like like, if I want to make this good, I have to, you know, you know, like the whole artist thing, like, oh, I made one single error, have to make sure everything has to be perfect. Yeah, I have that, I have that kind of mentality, and because of that, I went back to game dev, and I want to give it one more try, and here we are. I made a game for Sage, and kind of surprised, though. I never expected it to be that far, I'll be honest. I thought, I'm, back when I was a kid, I mean, if, if, the old James right now, he's, he's gonna see me. Oh, you made a video game? Oh, that's, that's actually a whole different story now. Like, this is now a different James who did the whole programming and all. So, there's still more, um, this is a question. Was Silver the Hatchet being a game? Unlikely, though. I mean, originally I was planning to add other characters, but now it's unlikely, so sorry. I think that's, I think, I think that's all. I think the other questions are... Well, if you want, I think, okay, fine, I'll, I'll answer those questions. Will modern, song, will modern song be in the game? Highly unlikely, no. Actually, no, just straight no. I mean, if you look at the Star Storybook series, I don't want to do that kind of thing. Like, I put modern song in, plunge him to another world. The problem here is that it felt too different. It's like, there's this little contrast, like, if you compare Sonic to every single character in the game beside the whole, like for example, Sonic the Black Knight, if you compare that to the humans and all and all the monsters and everything, this doesn't belong to a Sonic game at all, like, at all. I mean, sure, the story is good and the art style is amazing, but if you look at this, I mean, 
it doesn't feel right at all. I mean, yeah, Paper Mario did the same thing, but the thing is, that's the whole thing. Different, different count. I mean, especially in Mario Odyssey, like the thing is, it was intentionally to have different countries, and because that there's different styles of it. For example, the humans there have cartoonish, or some of them have more, well, realistic a bit. So the thing here is that it's it's intentional. However, in here, it felt like it's too forced. It needs intentional, yeah, but it felt forced and it doesn't blend well to the whole aesthetic of Sonic. There'll be a lot of K if the colors are more card slightly bit more of the style of Sonic is doing right now. I could say the same thing with the Adventure series, especially in the, the game version. The Sonic S is actually the best one of the best ones to represent, however, Sonic Unleashed is also a really good way of representing that as well. So where is Sonic in Amy Sphere? I think I can't answer that at all at right now. So I can't answer that. Sorry. Um that means you have the most number of questions right now. Okay, so I think this is it for the questioning part and well the QA part. Now I'll be talking about you know the upcoming content for Sonic and the Main Master. As you may have noticed, uh, I'll be flashing some images on the screen. The, I'll be starting working on the prelude, which is the very beginning part of the game. But the coming, the, the whole up, the coming content will be something like this. So before, I think I'm not gonna mention the, the prelude at first. I think the prelude is really obvious. There's a tutorial. You gotta introduce the world and all this kind of stuff. So I'll be mentioning something like right past the prelude. So. We're going to look at chapter 1. Chapter 1 is going to be something like this. So the idea behind chapter 1 is that I want Otan and, and I want Otan to move into the city. So that way he'll get some familiarity so that he'll get to know what the world looks like. Like for starters, Prelude will be take around his hometown. However, the city will take out something new like more robotics or so much machinery there. So much things there, like it's very urban. However, chapter one will be focusing more on his travels, like you know, the cruise ship part. So at that time we're going to be introduced with another character, as you can know, this is where Mallory was introduced. However, you won't be you won't able to she won't able to join her you won't be able to join your team at first. In fact she's actually busy with her own case. So, what's going to happen in this chapter, in this chapter, this seems to be very simple, this very, this seems not very chaotic, um, well, at first, yeah, but later on, the, the Tyrish cruise ship will somehow stop for no reason, will be plunged to a stop, and, and Autumn will wake up in the middle of the night, you'll notice that this, the, you'll notice that the air is getting colder and colder to the point that the, his entire room felt like it, it lost to a blizzard. And when he opens his cabin door, he'll notice that the entire ship is looked like a winter wonderland of nightmares. So, this is gonna be chapter 1. And the gimmick here is all about, well, as you can guess, ice. The name of the level will be the Arctic Labyrinth. Yeah, that's right. The entire cruise ship will be one giant labyrinth. And I actually. Actually, and the main enemy for this one um, is this. It actually, there's actually a lot of com I think this is one of the main reasons why I want to go to an indie game status. Mainly because one of those reasons. Besides Banshee, this enemy also has a problem in, in syncing up with Sonic's world. Because of its theme and, you know, look at this appearance. I mean, it's actually showing an actual skull of a thing. Or a human skull. I'm not really sure though. Um, I mean, not be, I'm not sure if that's considered brutal or far off the whole Sonic world aesthetic. Then again, there's this whole thing and all, but anyway. So the main gimmick about this chapter is that you'll be chased on by this very enemy. He goes by the name as the, the Drench Man. He doesn't have a name yet, so Manor is going to take up a name for him. So the Drench Man will actually chase, he'll chase Oton down the path. But the problem here is this. There's going to be frozen... Walls like like stalagmites and everywhere, or stalagmites or something like that. And the floor will be slippery to the point that controlling your controlling speed is the one thing you're to escape. So, how about the battles? So the battles is going to be much different now. Is that 
I like the I like the Mega Watch. I like like the Atomic Factory's gimmick where the electric forty. In here is that at first the battles here is considered you can't win this fights. You can win. You can only run. You can only run in this fights. Mainly because you don't have the cursor yet, so you have to find Mary. Because the main gimmick in this fight is that remember the bulbs from the fish enemy. By the way, the fun fact that the name of the enemy is White Eyes. I see white and ice combined into one word to place the. No, 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 no. The purpose is the, the thing is is that you click the bulb and then frozen frozen gas will start freezing the enemy bullets. The problem is you don't have the cursor to activate it. So this is the part where you, your your battery is going to join you. However, there's now a big problem. Um, the moment you see Mallory, she'll be entirely frozen. Like her is either I didn't actually be sure yet about this one. Um, it's either her cabin door is frozen or her her or she herself is frozen. So here's the thing: you have to melt some part, do some puzzles here, really need it back and back. You know those standard RPG, you know those kind of things. You know, fetch quest and all that. Anyway. Once you free Mallory, she will she will guarantee join you, and you, this is where the start of the mystery began. Um, you'll be chased on by this maniac for the entire time of this chapter, and your mission here is to make sure you found much info as you need in order to beat this guy. Because the fact this thing is like he's a like the thing about the Dredge Man is that at first he looks like a abominable snowman with antlers, basically like a minotaur in a, in a labyrinth. The thing is, um, his appearance is going to be not something like mechanical at first. His appearance more like monstrous. It's like something from a fairy tale or something from a, a fictional, uh, something like that. So the thing is, you'll be chased on by, by, by this quote unquote monster. And the thing is, you have to solve the mystery behind it. And you'll realize that once you found that mystery, once the solution to that, you'll notice that this thing is entirely operated by a diving suit. And you start to notice even weirder is that there's no one inside the diving suit. So basically, this concludes that this is, a, this is one giant robot or something like that. I, want, I don't want to discuss more, please. I didn't spo I already spoiled it a bit that much. But anyway, that, that's the idea behind chapter 1, you know. In chapter one and all. Um, so fun. Also, plus I actually have designed some enemies for that, as you can see here. Also, a mini boss. The mini boss for this chapter will be Medusa, which is a chandelier, which is a chandelier that's shaped like a jellyfish with a claw on a on the bottom, like a little dangling claw with a glowy eye. So the gimmick on this, I don't, I'm not sure about the gimmick this one this time. So I'll let let be your imagination how it's gonna work. So what about other contents like, I mean I don't have the roadmap available right now, so since it becomes, this game is about to become an indie game, um, I would plan to change its name. I think you already know the name of this game by now. I already post some names of it, like before, like Discord name, the URL name from Game Show, and all those kind of things. It's like you already seen the actual name for this project. Like. For those who are upset about this decision, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really, I understand you want to see a Sonic RPG who did something different. But at, at this point, it's really, I, I can't waste this. Like, there's a lot of portion on this game that felt like if I do that, if I stick this decision, and I, ha I have to sacrifice a lot of the, the, what, the design choices and everything, especially with Banshee there. Banshee is like originally. Oh yeah, fun fact on Banshee here. Um, let's say something about Banshee. You know, you hold. You know, he's basically the tail dolls and everything. Um, people keep on mentioning that this is basically an inspiration to Sans, on his in based on his first design. So the thing is, he's not actually based on Sans at all. It's just the main inspiration for for Banshee in the first place is Monokuma. Yeah, that's right, Monokuma. Um. The main is because the idea behind Banshee is that he wasn't going to be more of a horror team villain for his, you know, for the whole Sonic thing. He's actually going to be more laid back. Just like Monokuma, he's very sadistic, he's very cheerful, but at the same time, he's very... Well, sadistic, and I already said that already. I think we, I think we actually hit the end of the video here. I think there's not much to discuss, other than what else I could say. Like, there's so many... 
history in, in front of the main master, like, was OJ going to be more of a platformer and all those kind of things, but, eh, you already know that part of the story now. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for listening to this, um, this is actually my first time doing so, um, it's really hard to go off script, it's like, I don't plan a script at all, like, I really watch a lot of YouTubers at the time, and all those kind of things. So, Thank you guys for watching this video. Also, let's thank you again for for playing my game in Sage. I'll, I promise there will be more content to it, but for now, I have to take a break. I have a lot of things to worry on right now. Anyway. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. I really haven't said the line for the longest time. What's my last let's play? Was it Mega Man 11? Nah, it, it's... Nah, I don't think so.